Welcome back guys. Today I'll be doing some multiple choice questions part 2 on polynomials, indices and set theorem. Now here we're going to create a set builder for the following integral notation. Now square bracket means closed while curve bracket means open. So we look at which one having closed at negative 3, which is the first option, and as you can see, it's open at 5. So that's it. The answer is A. So here we're going to factorize completely this polynomial. We're not given a factor. So what we have to do is use the last number and find the factors of this. The factors of 6 is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. Now we're going to try to see which one of these values, when we substitute for x, we'll get 0. So these are actually x values that we're substitute once we get 0. It means it's a factor. So I am going to try x equal 1. If 1 doesn't work, then I'll try negative 1 and I'll continue to try the numbers. So I replace x with 1, so I have 1 cubed minus 2, then 1 squared minus 5 times 1 plus 6. Now 1 cubed is 1, 1 square is 1, so 1 times 2, that's 2, 5 times 1, that's 5, so I have a minus 5 plus 6. Now adding this, 1 minus 2, that's negative 1, minus 5 is negative 6, plus 6, 0. So that means it's a factor. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to carry the 1 over, so it becomes x minus 1. So this is the first factor for the polynomial, x minus 1. Now the next step is to find the remaining factors, and to find the remaining factors, we'll have to divide. I'll be using synthetic division to find the remaining factors, and this is what we're going to do. Now, I have my open box, and I'm going to take the coefficient of x cubed, the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x, and the constant. So the coefficient of x cubed is 1. That's the number in front of the x cubed. That's 1. Then the coefficient of x squared is negative 2. Remember the signs. And the coefficient of x is negative 5. And the constant is 6. Then I'm going to write the, the 1 that I have here that I've used. That's the first factor that I had gotten. So now we do synthetic division where we carry the one down the 1, then 1 times 1 is 1, then we add minus 2 plus 1 is negative 1, then we multiply 1 times negative 1, that's negative 1, then we add negative 5 plus negative 1, that's negative 6, then you multiply again 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, then we add to get the last number which is the remainder 0. We have to get 0 by the way. Now, 1, negative 1, and negative 6 will create a quadratic. So it's 1x squared is the same thing as x squared. Minus 1 is the same thing as minus x. And then the constant is negative 6. So this all is formulated to become a quadratic. So now we're going to factorize. So we'd see two numbers that multiply to give me negative 6, but add to give me negative 1. So those two numbers are minus 3 and positive 2. Because negative 3 times 2, that's negative 6. And when you add that, you'll get negative 1. So now I'm going to substitute the center with the two factors that I have here. So I'll have x squared minus 3x plus 2x. So plus 2x minus 6. Then I group. In the first bracket, I factor out an x. I'm left with x minus 3. Then in the second bracket, I factor out a 2. 
So I'm left with x minus 3. So what do I have? I have x plus 2 and then we have x minus 3. So I write the bracket 1. So we have x minus 3. Now a cubic function has three factors. So that's why we go back to the initial one we have which is x minus 1. So now we have to look at which one of the options we have here, A, B, C, D, or E. And as you can see, C is the one that has x minus 1, x plus 2, and x minus 3. So the answer is C. That's it. Our next example is an indices question where we're going to evaluate this. Now, first thing, when you have a negative power, we flip the, the fraction, so it becomes 4 over 1, and change the sign to positive. Now, 4 over 1 is the same thing as 4, then we have to the half. Half is the same thing as square root, so the square root of 4 is 2. So the answer is B. Now, there's another way that we can do it using the laws of indices that says A to the negative N is equal to 1 over A to the N. So, where I have a quarter to the negative a half, applying this rule is saying that we will rewrite it in a fraction. So, it means this becomes 1 over a quarter raised to the positive a half. Now, remember, a half is the same thing as square root. So, I can have this as 1 over the square root of 1 over 4 and then when we're square rooting with square root the 1 so that gives us 1 and square root the 4 and that gives us 2. And when you have a fraction in the denominator we reciprocate it or flip it so the answer is just 2 over 1 which is 2 so we're getting the same answer. The next example we have we're going to rewrite this in the same base. So a to 1 is the same thing as 3 to the 4th. So I'm going to have a to 1 as 3 to the 4th. And then I have the power, which is x to the minus 1. But I'm going to put this in bracket because the 4 affects the x and the minus 1. So I'm going to multiply 4 times x and then 4 times negative 1. Now we have 3 to the 2x plus 1, then multiplying we have 3 to the 4 times x, that's 4x, and 4 times minus 1, that's minus 4. The bases are the same, so we drop the base and equate the powers to be equal. So we have 2x plus 1 is equal to 4x minus 4. Now it groups. And then we have minus 4, and then we carry the positive 1 over the equal sign, so it becomes negative 1. So 4x, group it with the 2x, and 1, group it with another negative 4. Now, well, 2x minus 4x is minus 2x. And minus 4 minus 1, that's negative 5. Then we divide both sides by negative 2. This cancels. So also this cancels. So x is equal to positive 5 over 2. So the answer is A. Now the next example we have here, we need to determine the amount of elements in the set builder where x is such that x is an element of natural numbers where x is greater than negative 2 but x is lesser than or equal to 3. So the focus is on that it's a natural number and the natural number starts at 1. So we have 1, 2 and because it's equal to, we'll also have 3. So we have three elements, so the answer is A. Now, the next example we have here, 
gonna find the amount of elements but now it's integers where we have the same range as before now integers are negative and positive numbers so because this is not equal negative to I will start at negative 1 0 1 2 and then 3 because we have equal to so the difference is that we have integers negative and positive numbers so the answer in this one is D because we have five elements Now the next example, we're going to find what is A union B given the set A and set B. Now first I'm going to represent this on the number line and I'm going to have negative 3 and 5 on this number line. You don't have to have all numbers on the number line. We just need estimate. And it's a square bracket, so I'm going to have a closed circle with shaded. That means closed and the curve bracket means it's open so I have an open circle so this represents set A on the number line for set B we're gonna have negative 8 and realize I have it in front of the negative 3 are not behind so the position matters so it means 2 will fall behind 5 so because both brackets are curved they're both open at negative 8 and 2 and this represents set B now A union B is the entire area that the set covers, so the starting point and the ending point. So the starting point is negative 8, so we can eliminate option D, and the stopping point is 5. Now all three options have this starting and stopping point, but it's not included at negative 8, neither is it included at 5. So the answer is C. For our next example, we have set A and set B, and we're asked to find A complement intersect B in set interval notation. So once again, I'm going to represent set A on the number line. It's the same example as the previous one. So it's close at negative 3, open at 5, and set B also on the number line, so I'm going to have negative 8 and 2. So I'm going to represent this set also on the number line, just as before. So it's open at negative 8 and open at 2. Remember, I know that it's open because a curved bracket means open and a square bracket means closed. Now this question wants a complement intersect B. Complement means outside of the set. So I now have to determine the area outside the set. So, I, so here is closed, so I'll have open. I'm going on to negative infinity, and that's the area outside of set A. And then on the other side, it's going to be closed. And it goes on to positive infinity. Now, it's usually the opposite. Complement is outside. So if it's not closed at the end, then it's open. If it's not open, then it's closed. So that's what's happening here. Now I'm going to remove set A because the red diagram represents the complement outside the set, everything outside the set. Now I want the overlapping region between A and B. A complement and B. So as you can see, it's only one side, which is negative 8 and negative 3 region. So that means the answer is C because it's open at negative 8 and open at negative 3. So that's why the answer is C. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.